anointing that he's saying here is one of the best anointings, uh, the main anointing of an individual. And it's how other, other anointings, other moves are judged. Okay? I want you to keep in mind that when we're talking about the anointing, we're talking about that which is in a person. The ability to do. Remember, when we feel the presence of God moving in the house, it's the presence of God. You know, the anointing is in us. The ability to do the work of God. That's what the anointing is. Okay, and Paul says, uh, John said in 1 John, he says, by the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone should teach you. You don't need anyone to teach you how to prophesy, teach you how to lay hands, teach you how to do this, because the Holy Spirit in you teaches you how to do it. You have to learn how to spend time with him so that he can teach you. Please, please, don't go through a pro school of the prophets where they're teaching you how to prophesy. Because it is, it is not proper. If they're teaching the school of the prophets and they're teaching you to stay on your face and do intercessory prayer and lay before the Lord and get into the Word, that's good. But if they're telling you how to speak what you hear and, and just say it and all this kind of stuff, that's not good. Because it's not yours, it's his anointing. And you have to submit to him so that you won't allow anyone else to teach you. The way God used me and the way God used you is based on the relationship. The reason he used me and is different than anybody else is because of the relationship, the time, the price, the sacrifice that I spent with God. Maybe you haven't spent enough time yet. But when you begin to do, then the presence of God in your life or the anointing of God in your life will become just as sensitive and that's the only difference. I don't have no more God in me now than you have in you right now. It's the same God. The only difference is I'm more aware of Him because of the spending time. You right understand that? Yes. And you got to spend that time if you know you want to be more sensitive. Now, he talks about the Old Testament saints. The priests, the prophet, and the king. The people of God could, the, the people could not hear God for themselves. So they had to depend on somebody else to hear God. <laughs> so they always, even the king, there were times when the king, the uh, one king who was David, heard from God. So he didn't need a prophet to come and tell him what the word of the Lord is. He heard for God for himself. But there were other kings who could not hear. And they were called the prophet to tell them what the word of the Lord. The priest told the people what God was speaking unto them. As well as the prophet. So they needed someone to speak for God. But in the New Testament. In the body of Christ today. We have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We have all the gifts of the Spirit in us. All the fruit of the Spirit in us. And the seven spirits of God in us. And so when I prophesy to you, it is to confirm and not lead you. Because remember, if we go back and look at everything he's talking about, or when we finish this, you will find out that the believer's anointing, when it judges other people, it's an inner witness. And we judge other people in their ministry based on the inner witness. And what we're looking for is truth. Are they speaking the truth? How can you tell when a person is speaking the truth or not? Because you're going to have the inner witness. Somebody can say, you, you, you don't have all the time to spend time with God. And then you have, <laughs> you have someone say something. And then all of a sudden in you, you get this feeling. Something ain't right about that. I don't know what it is, but something just ain't. Something just ain't right. And you can't explain it. But see, the inner witness is, is allowing you to know that something is wrong. How many times you met people and, and something about them won't right? And as we say, we couldn't put our fingers on it. And that's the reason why, because of the inner witness. And we have to learn how to follow that. We have to learn how to follow that. But we kind of get nervous sometimes because we don't like confrontation. Yeah. 
So now that they hit us. I'm not like us. Yeah. So we all definitely want people to like us. Now watch this. Revelations 1 and 6 says, He has anointed us, the body of Christ, to be kings and priests. Mm -hmm. Now, if He has anointed us and are made us kings and priests, then the position of king and priest is different than that of the Old Testament. Because the, the anointing of the king and priest in the Old Testament was to guide the people. That's the Holy Spirit's job now. But we placing kings as king and priests, not for guidance, but for a position of authority to declare the word of the Lord to the people of God. In a sense, to create a pull on them to God. What? And also to deal with the spirits and everything else that's not right. Okay? Sure. Get one of those flowers on the table over there. <laughs> yeah, bring the whole thing, sit in front of you. Say in front of you. Oh, okay. yeah. All right. I want you to cast the devil out of that. Out of that. Yeah. <laughs> that thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a um. That's a flower. It's got a devil in it. Just an it's just an illustration. Oh. <laughs> just an illustration. <laughs> mm. <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> I just say, well, in the name of Jesus, leave. Period. Okay. All right. Pass it to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You gave it to who? Between them? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. In the name of Jesus, I cast you out. Jesus. Okay. Pass it to somebody else. <laughs> in the name of our Lord and Savior, I command you to be done right now in Jesus' name. Okay. One more person. In the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of this life. All right. Now, to those who didn't do it, did you feel the authority? Yeah. You did? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Okay. All right. That flower is uh, your son. Okay. And you need him to sit down. Sit down, Malik. <laughs> no, go ahead. Great, good. Very good. Okay. Put it out loud. Sit down. Okay. <laughs> That's your grandchild, William. She need to sit down. Sit down now. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Why did your voice elevate when you're speaking to your child and it was calm? When you were speaking to the flower. Go ahead. Well, for me, I I felt that um, I just it was I was reminded Jesus didn't wrestle; he just spoke. So that's why I just I was assured, I was confident, right, that if the devil was gonna leave, be cast out. So that's okay. why I just spoke and okay, you know. So why did your voice elevate when you spoke to Malik? Because sometimes he gets on my nerves. <laughs> good. <laughs> Very good.